What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. My name is Milmas and in today's video, I'm not going to be touching a car. And that's because I'm going to be showing you something that you guys kind of have an idea what it is, especially you guys can obviously read the title of the video. I'm going to be showing you guys and talking about the upgrades that I've done to this sandblasting cabinet. So I purchased a Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinet. It cost me 200 bucks and it's a relatively inexpensive unit. And right out the box, it's decent. However, there's some definite upgrades that you guys can get that are going to make your blasting process and experience so much better. In today's video, I'm going to go over some tips showing you guys what you guys can do to make all of this a much more pleasant experience. Hopefully, so you guys can blast some stuff, spend not too much money, and basically have the output of a more expensive unit. I hope that makes sense. Let's get right into it. So the main reason why you would want to purchase something like this is so that you can actually remove rust from any kind of component. So if you can fit it inside this large unit through this side door, we can strip it and we can make it look better. So as you guys can tell here, here are three parts that you guys will find on cars that get very rusty. And these are all components from the braking system. Now let me turn my light on to give you guys a better idea as to what exactly happened. So you can see that we have rust and corrosion on this steel component. And you can see that this side here has been stripped and the entire carrier has been put inside my sandblasting unit. And you can tell I obviously cleaned up half of it. So you can see that there is a huge difference. This is rust free. This, there's obviously still rust on it. So as it stands, this will rust if I put this back on the car as is. Now the benefit of having a sandblasting cabinet is that you would follow it up with either painting it or put some sort of coating or protection on top of it to prevent it from getting rusty again. So this is actually not too bad. I've seen brake setups that are a lot worse than this, but you can see how much of a difference it really makes. So the brake rotor hat on here is actually pretty corroded and pretty pitted in the center. And you can see some marks still after blasting. So if you guys follow this up, let's say with sandpaper or something like that, you guys can make it so that the finish is super smooth. However, the rust is still gone. That's just the pitted metal that's left behind. So this brake setup obviously is going to be getting replaced, but I wanted to show you guys what it would look like after you guys sandblast. You can see this is smooth. There's no more rust on there. And this is pretty much ready to go for a coat of paint to protect it. Now, obviously the tools that I've acquired over the years have definitely helped me get a much better sandblasting experience. That's because I have a large 80 gallon air compressor. I have a large six and a half horsepower shop vac. I have the sandblasting unit itself, but most importantly, I have the space to lay out all of these tools to get this operation up and running. So if you guys want a very introductory sandblasting unit, you guys can purchase a small desktop version of this. So something that will basically sit on top of there. It'll be a smaller unit. You won't be able to fit as many large items in the side of the cabinet. However, it'll get you by to do a bunch of work to small things. You're gonna need a small air compressor. Now, ideally, you guys will need a 20 gallon air compressor. This here is an 81, and this is very heavy duty. As you can tell, it's bolted to the floor. So obviously, not everyone is gonna have the space or the funds for something like this. However, this will make the sandblasting experience way better. This is the deal breaker. The air compressor makes the difference. However, you can still get by without something this massive. So when you guys purchase one of these sandblasting cabinets, you're obviously gonna to have to set it up. Now, if you guys can lay out all the parts that you guys are gonna be using, everything is gonna be made very easy because finding each component to assemble is gonna be very straightforward. It comes with instructions, so it's a relatively straightforward install. However, set aside a couple hours to do this because it is pretty complex. There's a bunch of bolts, there's a bunch of washers, and making sure that each one of these is tight and properly sealed makes a big difference, especially in the final result. Now also, if you guys are just doing this by yourself, this will be a little bit more difficult. If you have someone else to help you, definitely ask a friend because it makes the install much easier. Now keep in mind, this blasting unit, it is still 200 bucks. It's not that expensive, especially given the size of it. So with that being said, you can expect the quality to not be 100%. It's a Harbor Freight unit at the end of the day. It does the trick, it is great, don't get me wrong. However, it's not amazing. Don't expect it to be a 10 out of 10, perfect, amazing, you know, blow it out of the water kind of unit. It's adequate, and I'll be honest with that. If you can get past that, the performance out of it is pretty killer. Ideally, if you guys can set this up on some sort of dolly or some other way of elevating the unit off the ground, it makes it easy for one of two reasons. Number one, when you stand up next to the blasting cabinet, you can put your arms straight into it. You will not be leaning over and hurting your back. 
If you're, let's say, sandblasting for 20 minutes or half an hour and you're leaning over, your back is going to hurt. So if you have it at the proper height so that you can just go right up to it and look into the blasting unit, it makes it very ergonomic. At the same time, I have this on a dolly setup. So if I want, I can click that up and that, and I can bring this wherever I want with me. What I'm getting at is that you can move it around. So if you need to move this, let's say outside or in a, in a different area of your garage, this makes it stupid proof. I used some cheap dollies that I found on Amazon. I used a piece of particle board and I used a bunch of two by fours. Pretty easy, very cheap, gets the job done and it works. Now the bucket and the hose that I have attached to the side of here makes a very big difference as to how this all works. So the vacuum does a very good job at sucking up all the airborne particles. But the problem with that is that if it gets sucked into the vacuum, you pretty much have to throw all that stuff out. So if you have a very good vacuum, it's very good at cleaning up everything, but it's also very good at emptying the contents of the cabinet. So that means that you'll be buying more media pretty much every time you use it. And that is why I purchased what's called the dust deputy. Now there's two different versions of the dust deputy, but basically what you'll need is this top portion. So the basic version is just this unit here and you'll have to rig it up to a five gallon bucket bolt it to the top of it and it basically allows the air that gets pulled from the side of the unit to go through here down into here and it spins around and the vacuum that gets attached to here basically just pulls air through it instead of bringing all of that media up in there as well so if you were to open this up it would actually be pretty clean i'll have a link for both units the deluxe version which is what i have and the basic version i'll have them both in the description box now, this bigger unit comes with a light that you're supposed to install inside the cabinet. However, I find it to be A, not that bright, but also a very poor design. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because anything that is inside the blasting cabinet gets pitted. So whether it be the, the glass itself, whether it be the walls, whatever it is, it's going to get pitted. So over time, the lens that's on the actual light won't be clear. So the light that's actually gonna be coming into the cabinet and that's supposed to light everything up is gonna be a little bit muted. So for that reason, I didn't install it and I use these lights here. So these inexpensive floodlights that I purchased on Amazon are not only stupid bright, but the nice thing about them is that I have both of these positioned on top of the glass here, one on one side, one on the other. And the nice thing about that is that the light goes into the cabinet and it doesn't give me any shadows. So my old sandblasting cabinet that I had at my parents' place was very similar to this, where I used these exact same lights. And the beauty about it is that you can turn them on and off. There's no shadows because it literally just sits right on top of the glass like this. And if you want to work inside there, one light, two lights, and everything is lit. So looking into the sandblasting cabinet with no lights on, you'll see this. With one of the floodlights on, and when you turn the other one on, everything else is basically crystal clear. You're not gonna have any shadows with this kind of unit. Stick your hands inside the openings with the glove and you can blast away. So this is a little fluorescent light that comes included with the kit. Let me show you how atrocious this is. Like, it's terrible. And like, look at the difference with this one. Like I could stare at this all day. I could not stare at that even for a second. It's that bright. So this just goes to show how much of a difference there is. Do not waste your time with installing this guy here in your cabinet. On the note of not installing parts that come included with this blaster, if you guys were to open up your unit and install everything correctly, you'll have your sandblasting gun inside of here. You'll have the line here, which is your air supply, and you'll have here this line, which is gonna be the siphon or the feed for all of the media. Now, if you guys install this hose here, which hooks up, to the actual sandblaster, which is the air supply, you will have leaks because the only thing that is preventing this from leaking is a little worm gear clamp that bolts up to a male fitting for the air inlet. My suggestion to you guys is to literally throw this out because it is not worth it and buy yourselves a proper air compressor line that has a quick connect right here so that if you guys wanna, let's say, take out the hose or you know maybe install a different gun, you can do that easily and you're still using the same inlet hole that they designed to use for right here. You guys may notice also that when you guys are blasting in the cabinet, you may find that the cabinet will leak, even if you use the foam that is included, which is basically the weather stripping. 
The issue is because you're using high pressure air to basically throw a glass or a sand or whatever at a part, it can find any crack in any crevice, including all the leaks that you'll find throughout this entire thing. So before you guys set up your actual cabinet, ensure that you guys have some sort of silicone, whether it be an RTV that you use for an engine, or you can use a clear silicone, also an RTV, to get every crack of the cabinet sealed. The benefit of that is that you A, won't be losing any product as you're blasting, but you also don't have any mess to clean up because you'll find that if you don't do that, you'll be regretting it later. When I initially set this up, I knew I was gonna be finding some leaks because my old one did the same thing. However, I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. So I had to evacuate all the media that I had inside the bottom right here so that the actual RTV would adhere properly. After all of that, after I let it dry for 24 hours, after refilling it, I can say that it doesn't leak anymore and I love it. However, you still may find that there's a drawback. When you open up this door, any sand or any glass that's on the door may wanna actually fall down. So you may find a little bit of dust or stuff uh, around this area, but is nowhere near as bad as it was before. Definitely use RTV when you guys are installing and setting up this unit. Now, if you guys are like me, you'll have a drawer with a ton of zip ties and you'll actually find that this is actually helpful for this install. When you guys set this up, you'll see that on the bottom here, there's this quick release flap. Now, if you turn this 90 degrees, this bottom drawer will open up and everything that is above here, all the media will come shooting out the bottom. So if you guys can put a zip tie around here, it will prevent this from accidentally opening up. I don't understand why it's so easy to turn because you don't really empty this that often. If you guys have a zip tie lying around, definitely throw it around here. Put it behind this little lever so that it doesn't just accidentally open. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I will most likely be doing some other upgrades or changes to this blaster as time goes on just to make things a little bit easier and uh, you know more convenient for me. I've seen a bunch of people change the opening style of this. So instead of having the side door open up, they'll actually make it so that the top portion uh, of the blaster flips backwards. And it seems to be a little bit easier and more convenient if you're ever sandblasting any very large items. Now, at the same time, even if you do put a large item inside your box, you still have to be able to move it around so that you can blast that area, but you still need to have also a little bit of distance between the gun that you're using and the part. So you can't occupy the entire space inside the cabinet of let's say, you know, a wheel or something like that, or a control arm. You need to have some space for things to move around a little bit. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm gonna grab a couple pieces, maybe some bolts, maybe the caliper, the brake rotor, whatever, and show you guys how nice this system is to use while blasting. Now just some last tips before we actually get started with using it. The tip size that you use makes a big difference as to how the media comes out. Also, if the unit is going to be surging or not. Each tip has a certain size inlet and outlet, and that will determine how the media is gonna come out with what pressure. So CFM rate, uh, air pressure, size, this all matters when blasting, and you guys will find this out. However, you can see here the size difference between these two. You can see the top one is indeed bigger. If you guys live somewhere north and any car that you guys have that let's say comes into your garage or even shop for that matter, uh, if you see rust, you're gonna definitely benefit from one of these because it makes cleaning and working on cars way easier if you're reinstalling, let's say, a clean bolt that doesn't have rust on it versus something that is basically just covered in scale and just it's rotten. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna get started with blasting this. Let me know what you guys think. So with the quick connect fitting, you can undo any attachment, hook up the sandblasting air inlet. You can see here I have a water and oil separator, which is important. You guys will find out that having clean, dry air coming into your sandblasting cabinet makes a very big difference when you're blasting because you're not gonna be having any water or humidity gum up the actual air that's coming in which will affect how the gun works. So with this hooked up, the cabinet now has air. Let's say you guys are using this vacuum to let's say clean out your car. You'll just take off this attachment and this guy here will go directly on top of the dust deputy. Now, before you guys actually use this for your first time, behind this plate on the back side of the cabinet, there's gonna be a hole with a cover on top of it. You'll wanna take that off because we have air that is getting sucked out of the cabinet and if you don't have an inlet for it, well, it might not work so well. 
So the vacuum might not work. It might not actually clear anything out from inside of there. The cover looks like this here. So as you guys can tell here, I have the brake caliper now inside the blasting unit. I have the air inlet. I have the pickup tube. And basically whenever I'm ready, when I turn the vacuum on and I pull this trigger here, media, well actually let's back this up. Air will come out through the gun, through the top, and it will create a vacuum inside the inlet or this pickup, which will bring the media through this tube and then out the tip. Now I have the largest tip that is included in the Harbor Freight setup. Um, and I don't have this top screw here, this, as you can tell, threaded in completely. You'll see when you guys play around with it, but I have very fine glass media inside the bottom. And I'm gonna show you how well this does at cleaning up all this rust. You can see how fast it strips off basically all of the rust. So if you guys noticed while I was doing that, you could see exactly what I was doing very easily from up top. That's because I have the dust deputy and the vacuum hooked up like this. It is a no brainer. This here is probably one of the biggest differences other than actually having a big compressor. Like it makes the sandblasting experience way better. Now I'm not gonna bore you guys with fully sandblasting this caliper. However, I just wanna show you guys how well this works. So it works very well at removing rust. Let me show you how well it works at removing paint on parts. So inside the cabinet here, you can see I have uh, a portion of a jack stand that has a little bit of black paint on it. So this is aluminum. You can sandblast aluminum. You can sandblast steel. You can even blast plastic. It's pretty cool. But I'm going to show you like even this portion down here where that would be pretty much impossible to clean out with, let's say, sandpaper. This does a great job at just stripping back everything, especially in the intricate areas like, let's say, in those holes or even on top of here. It basically removes the surface imperfections without actually damaging the substrate. So you can see this turns out absolutely perfect. So this is pretty much ready for a coat of paint if you guys want to protect this or even plate this. Now this right now is basically stripped back bare aluminum. So obviously this won't rust, but you can see in some areas, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but you can even see right here, see the, uh, the corrosion in the pitting. So you can see that it doesn't actually remove that. However, if you want to sand that back, you definitely can, but you can see it removes all the imperfections, all the paint, any surface rust that you had on there from the metal pin or anything else, it's essentially starting back fresh as this is bare metal. Now, if you guys did notice while I was blasting, sometimes when I missed the part, let's say with the uh, sandblasting gun, I would miss it and the compressed air in the media would shoot down at the material and the media that's underneath. And obviously it'll make a mess, as you can tell. So that is why having, let's say, the dust deputy makes a huge difference. So see this dust that's just lingering? Look what happens when I turn the vacuum on. It gets pulled this way, which is where the opening is. And then you can start to see again, like everything's normal. I hope this video has helped you guys out. I hope this has pointed you guys in the right direction, and given you guys an idea as to what you can expect if you guys buy a sandblasting cabinet and let's say some future upgrades to make your experience much better. By doing a couple of these upgrades, it will cut down the time that you're actually working on, let's say sandblasting one component, it will cut that time way down. If you have more effective media, if you have more power, more punch behind uh, your sandblasting gun, it'll make stripping back any kind of corrosion or paint or whatever very easy. I hope this video has helped you guys out. If you guys want to find any of the parts or tools that you guys saw in this video, you guys can find some in the description box. I link them there so you guys can purchase them. It makes it very easy to find any of these parts. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.